to the channel. I'm Talia, I'm an artist, an interior stylist in LA, and I help people affordably curate more functional and beautiful spaces with an emphasis on those of us who are blessed to live in small homes. If you watched my video last week, my home tour, which will be linked above and below and all that jazz, you might have noticed that I have a few plants about 50 or so to be exact and I have been collecting plants for five years um, keeping them alive and healthy for about four years and today I'm excited to share with you some basic beginner tips for starting your own beautiful plant collection as well as some styling tips for an Instagram worthy plantscape of your dreams. So if you clicked on this video, I probably don't have to explain to you why someone would want to collect plants. There's a really popular hashtag on Instagram called plants make people happy and I don't think truer words have ever been said. Plants lighten up the space, they clean the air, reduce noise pollution. Taking care of plants has been scientifically proven to increase your self-esteem and boost your mood, increase attention spans, and reduce anxiety. With all those benefits, you would think that every home in America would be like its own little mini indoor jungle, but I actually know more people who avoid having live plants in their home. The same reason I hear from friends who like see my plants on Instagram or in person and admire my collection that actively don't have any plants in their own home is that they've tried to take care of plants before and it didn't work out. The term black thumb is used frequently. It's my sincere belief that there's no such thing as a black thumb. There's no such thing as a person who cannot take care of a plant. It's just a matter of finding the right plant for the person and for their space, for their time commitment, their ability, and so on. So where do we begin? Do we head over to the local garden center at Lowe's to pick up a plant because it looks cute? No. I think if you have had problems taking care of plants in the past, the best thing to do is prepare and take some assessments to help figure out what kind of plant is going to be best for you. And there's two main things that you're thinking about when you're trying to assess what kind of plant you want. So in terms of planning, you first want to get an idea of where in your home plants are going to live. Plants need sunlight to survive and so considering where you're going to put plants in your home and how much sun they'll be able to get from that space is crucial. Different plants have different light requirements so the amount of light that you get in your house might actually dictate the types of plants that you're able to buy. If you think you'll need to incorporate some artificial lighting, you'll want to consider that here as well. Outside of sun requirements, I think you really want to consider the foot traffic that an area gets. So I have a lot of plants that kind of branch and vine out and they wouldn't be uh, good to put in spots where it's a narrow walkway if I have people that are going to be burling through and hitting my plants. You also want to think about whether hot or cold drafts are ever going to come through a space. So if you're right next to a window, is this a window that you open? Are you putting plants next to a heater because a lot of plants are not going to like the temperature shift? Humidity is also really big for plants, so I supplement my humidity in quite a few different ways and most house plants are going to uh, enjoy a generally more humid environment than your home will have naturally unless you live, you know, in the in the jungle somewhere, like 100% humidity, I don't know. But in general, you're going to have to consider is the space more dry? Do I have a humidity loving plant? Maybe should I consider putting my plant in a space like the bathroom or the kitchen where it's naturally a higher humidity than the rest of the home? You also want to think about um, your plants physically outgrowing a space because you know you're going to be taking really good care of these plants and they are going to grow and so I'm actually at a point where with a few of my plants they're getting too big to sit on the table, they're getting too big to, you know, I have a plant that's dangling from the ceiling, it's about to get too tall to be that close to the ceiling, and so that's another condition that you want to think about when assessing your home and the types of plants that you will be able to bring into your home and 
keep alive. The last thing you want to really consider uh, when taking your space into account is whether or not you have kids or pets. There are several different varieties of plants that are toxic to kids and pets and so you'll definitely want to avoid those or purchase them and keep them out of the way. If you have, you know, curious children or adorable little cat that likes to nibble on stuff. You certainly don't want mittens getting sick all over the rug after he chewed on your Diffenbachia. So there are, as you can tell, a lot of different things that you want to think about uh, in terms of what your space can handle and what kind of plants will thrive in your space before you even step foot in a nursery. The second major thing you want to consider when you're thinking about purchasing plants and what kind of plants you're going to bring into your home is your commitment and you want to be really honest with yourself here. If you know you're not the type that's going to be doting over plants and checking them every day, misting them, and making sure that they're pH balanced and all that, it doesn't mean you can't have a plant. It just means that you probably don't want to get a plant that's going to be a diva and require a lot of extra work. You're looking like more of a succulent guy than a calathea guy, my friend. A planning stage like this before going out and buying a plant, which you can literally pick up in most supermarkets right now, uh, may seem silly, but this is going to be the key first step in ensuring that the plants that you bring into your home are going to be a good fit for you and your home and that you're not putting them into the trash can three months from now. We don't want that. Happy green plants. So obviously I won't be able to tell you which specific plants are going to work in your space because I can't answer for you all of those assessment questions we just talked about. But I have created a free PDF for you to download. It's a plant buying flowchart guide that's going to walk you through some basic questions to determine what kind of plants will fit well in your space and then it's going to give you some recommendations and some general tips so if you're interested in downloading that pdf i'll have a link down below if you're interested in more detailed attention and help with this particular area i also offer digital plant styling courses so we meet on video chat you show me around your space we talk about what you want your space to look like and then I do all the shopping for you. I recommend plants and planters and accessories and styling tools and the whole nine yards. So both of those things will be linked down below. If nothing else I would definitely recommend checking out the free plant buying guide. Links down below. Shameless plug over. Let's move on. Okay so now we've done some planning. Let's get prepared because plants don't just need sunlight and water to survive. There's a lot of little tools and accessories that are going to help and the longer that you are collecting plants, the larger and more eclectic that your plant accessories collection is going to grow. But today I'm going to recommend six things that are going to get you started and keep you going for a while. The first thing is clippers. I have clippers to cut dead leaves off my plants as well as to cut cuttings which is taking a piece from a mother plant and creating a little baby plant that you can maybe give to a friend yay so I have two cutters on hand all the time one for most of my basic plants and then one to cut anything heavier um, mainly tree branches and other things that I bring into the house but if I ever need to cut maybe a leaf off my Monstera or something, the heavier clippers are gonna come in handy for that. Next up is a water meter. Uh, we are literally overwatering our plants to death. Most house plants die from being overwatered as opposed to being underwatered. And if you've had this problem before, using a water meter is gonna help you check the moisture in your soil before you water to make sure that you are not killing your plants with the kindness of water. The next thing you're gonna need is fertilizer. And fertilizer is used to replenish the nutrients in your plant soil. And it's gonna help them grow and thrive. I use fish fertilizer. It smells horrible, but it's natural and I've not had any issues with causing leaf burns on my plants, which can happen sometimes when you use a really nitrogen rich uh, commercial fertilizer. Next items are watering cans and spray bottles. These should be 
quite obvious. I do keep extra water from my plants and just plastic jugs behind the couch so that the water is room temperature when I go to water my plants. But I prefer to use these decorative watering cans to actually water my plants. They're just easier to hold and maneuver. I also mist my plants like literally two to three times a day. It's kind of obsessive. So I like to have decorative spray bottles spread all around the apartment so that I can always grab a spray bottle and take care of one of my plant babies. Next up is neem oil, which is my favorite dual purpose plant item. The main purpose is pest control. And I also like to use neem oil to condition my plants and give them a little shine while getting rid of extra dust. The last thing you're gonna need for your plant collection is soil. So when you buy a plant from a nursery or get it online, after it acclimates to your house for a little while, you're gonna to wanna to transfer it into a new pot. Uh, you're also going to be taking such good care of your plants that they're gonna be outgrowing their pots and you're gonna to need to replant them in a couple of years. So you can start with a really good quality organic potting mix you can buy from any garden center. Uh, you can also mix your own soil. Typically it's a mixture of a base. I use sphagnum moss and peat moss. You're also going to want to add some kind of fertilizer. I use worm castings and then some kind of draining element. I'm currently using perlite. Different plants will require different ratios of those sorts of things. Cactuses are obviously gonna like something that's coarser and that dries more quickly. So this isn't at all an exhaustive list. I have so many more accessories and tools and plant tchotchkes than I care to admit. But these six items are going to get you started and going to keep you going with your burgeoning plant collection so you don't have to invest much more outside of the things that I've just mentioned. So now we've taken stock of your space and your level of commitment. Got your water meter and your neem oil coming today, Amazon Prime shipping, and you've already downloaded my plant buying guide and determined that you are going to be investing in a snake plant and an African violet for your first go. It's time to start thinking about styling and bringing everything all together. So I always consider the plants first and styling second. It doesn't matter how good your plants look if your space won't keep them alive. <laughs> Dead plants are not sexy. So there definitely are people who will style plants in sub-optimum conditions or move them back and forth to kind of prolong them. But I am really of the idea that you can make any plant and any collection of plants look really good in your space. So I don't want to sacrifice the health of my plant collection for an aesthetic. So plant care is pretty universal, but plant styling is gonna vary greatly between different people based on their own personal style and their interior style sensibilities. Someone who has a, a minimalist aesthetic or rustic farmhouse chic isn't going to style plants the way that I do in my home. So I'm gonna use my bathroom as an example and show you some of the steps that I take when I'm thinking about how to style a space and other things that I wanna incorporate in addition to the plants. And I'm hoping that some of these tips are going to be basic enough for you to use and incorporate them when you're styling your own space. So the first thing you're gonna consider is any furniture that your plants are gonna be sitting on. I like the idea of having plants grouped all together on the floor and like a recessed corner of your house. But outside of that, I generally prefer to keep plants off the ground, either in a plant stand or on some sort of table or other elevated surface. In the bathroom, I'm using an Ikea lac TV stand, which is nice and narrow for a small bathroom, but also provides a decent amount of surface space for me to add different plants and styling elements. Next to your plants, the item that's going to be getting the most attention in your plantscape are the planters and 
pots that your plants are actually sitting in. I always like to have a mix of different styles of planters on my table. Usually one or two ceramic planters, and that's made of plastic, stone, or concrete, or other natural sort of elements. I've seen some really cool metallic gold finish planters, and some live edge, like wood cut planters. Uh, I like to use my spray bottles and watering cans as decor items kind of makes sense to have those next to the plants that they take care of the great thing about the watering cans is that in addition to adding a little bit of visual interest you can leave them filled with water that will evaporate and give your plant some extra humidity lastly you're going to finish out your space with some decorative items that relate to the space so in the bathroom, I decorated the lower shelf of my plant table with a tray that has some toilet paper for guest use. I also like to keep a little oil diffuser on the plant table in the bathroom to help with the bathroom aromas. I then have some decorative items that are in line with the general theme of my bathroom, which is Asia, sort of. <laughs> I've got these knickknacks from my travels in Asia kind of displayed here as well as some things that kind of remind me of Asian culture and aesthetic. So we've got this fantastic foundation built and it's finally time to add the house on top, the plants. I like to go for a diverse range of plants that will fit into those plants that will actually live and survive and thrive in my home that we've already talked about. And when I'm looking at diversity in plants, I'm kind of looking at a couple different areas. So first off is plant size, which is an obvious one. I like to tail end a table with two really tall plants and then kind of have smaller plants in the middle and kind of on the perimeter of those two. I also really like putting um, taller kind of narrow plants next to plants that are big and wide and more bushy like. The next thing I look at is a diversity in leaf color. I have plants with deep green leaves, neon green, plants with green variegation, plants with white variegation, stripes and polka dots and purple undersides and whole nine yards. Even before you consider the fact that a lot of plants, if taken care of, will actually flower, you can find a insanely diverse range of just green plants to stagger throughout your plantscape. Next area of diversity that we're searching for is leaf shape. And this one is so fun because plants come in so many different shapes there are fan-shaped leaves, circle-shaped leaves. I have a horse head philodendron that is aptly named. There's a cactus called the booby cactus. Booby cactus. Again, we have kind of filtered ourselves down to plants that we know we're gonna be able to take care of and that are gonna be able to thrive in the conditions that our home offers. But there's still so many plants to choose from even amongst that smaller pool and I definitely encourage you to find the widest range of crazy weird leaf shapes, sizes, and colors that you can find because that is what's going to make your plantscape, that view, that Instagram photo that you're hoping to take that much more glorious. That's it folks, you've made it to the end of the video and if you have, I appreciate you so much. I would love to know what your current relationship with plants is. Are you a successful plant parent with a stunning lush greenscape to show for it? Struggling parent? Reformed black thumb looking to start anew? I'd love to know. Uh, don't forget to download the free plant buying guide that I have linked in the description box if you are looking for some help in figuring out what kind of plant might be right for you and your home. I also hope you'll join me next Wednesday when we're going to be discussing styling by vantage point. What that is and how it's going to help you achieve a stunning cohesive style in your home. Okay. Until next time guys, me and my plants say goodbye. Ooh. Really? 
Okay. Help people a few little bit. <clears throat> hey, it's Talia. Welcome or welcome back. Let's try it again. Okay. Hi, it's Talia. Welcome or welcome back. Okay. Let's try. Welcome or welcome back first. Hey there, welcome or welcome back. It's Talia. I'm an artist and interior stylist in LA, and I help people affordably curate. Ugh. Can I say the word affordably? Can't. Probably not. Okay. Thank you.